let's go take a look at the workshop and see what we've got back here. So we've got uh, so, Carrie over here so. that uh, is actually one of our suspension engineers and I'm going to hand it off to him and Carrie can talk to you about the uh, design Hi and there. engineering behind this car. Uh, I'm Carrie Eisenlohr. Um, I was brought into this project in the early stages of it to um, help design and build the suspension that would uh, be a very drivable car um, on the streets but yet still be very track oriented so this is making it more of a club sport type of a car and Peter, Peter had reached out to me my background has been uh, pretty much in Porsches most of my life uh, for the last 40 years or so um, I was I autocrossed in them in, in when I was going to college and then later I, uh, I drove in IMSA and in order to be more competitive, I started developing a lot of the suspension parts for it, my background being in mechanical engineering. Um, and as we did that, we became faster and then I kind of ran out of money and had to work for a living. Uh, along, the, along that procedure process though, we, did, uh, uh, we were lucky enough to win Sebring in 1985 in our class, and that wasn't a Porsche as well. And so we, we continued and what had happened was, while I was working in the real world, uh, people would come back to me and ask me what we did to our car back in the day. And I slowly started a company that built and specialized in Porsche parts. So with that being there, uh, it's grown on. I've worked for other race teams uh, as an engineer and it went on. We won some other championships without me driving at that point. <clears throat> but Peter knew about me and some of my background. So that's kind of how I got pulled into all of this, if that wasn't too long. Um, so when Peter came to me, he said, I want something that would, you know, um, allow us to be super fast on the track that we could drive back and forth. Uh, with that in mind, um, when you start thinking it from an engineering standpoint, we want to transfer less weight in the car. And that, that initially means we're going to make the car stiffer. And he did not want that. So that made the, the project even bigger from there. And I said, I'm going to have to do a lot of redesign. We're going to have to do a lot of different uh, pieces, change the geometry in the car, and he said, let's do it. And so from that point forward, we, we went, and I can show you uh, a little bit of the suspension stuff here that we've done. Um, <clears throat> I kind of have this laid out right here, pardon all the parts. This is kind of the stock pieces that you'll see on a regular 993. Those links there, we've gone to fully adjustable links. The lower control arm now is completely adjustable. We changed a lot of the pickup points and some of the stuff you're not able to see right now, but we uh, changed the location from what it was originally so we could run the car at the right height we wanted and get the results that we wanted. You're looking here at the rear suspension. On the, on the front, there was a little bit bigger undertaking. Sorry for the jogging through the parts here. We changed some things, and you can see, obviously, too, <laughs> to make the car stop, we've got a massive brakes on this car. Uh, it's the biggest brake we could possibly fit underneath uh, the 18-inch wheel, which is another spec that he wanted to stay with the 18-inch wheel on it. Um, we've made a lot of different pieces. This will give you an idea here. This is, this is a factory upright, a wheel carrier that we have there. This is the part that I completely redesigned, changed quite a bit, and if you look at the center to the lower pickup points here, you can see there's big changes there. The steering arm is here. There's been a lot of different changes to the car that literally changed everything on the geometry that you can say out loud from the running the big tires that were running. We had a, a scrub radius uh, problem that came up and trying not to get too technical, but what it makes the car harder to steer. When you go to big tires like we have, we've done this to get a lot of grip in the car Anyone who's driven it will tell you the car's got an incredible amount of grip. And this is done partially with putting more rubber on the ground and keeping it on the ground. Um, but in order to do that, it's kind of like if you put big horsepower in a car, it's harder to make that car work and, and, and uh, um, to keep everything pointed straight. The same thing when you put big tires on the car, uh, it's harder to get the car so that it drives properly and drives easy as if it's a small tired car. One of them being the scrub radius and some of the things we've changed here uh, in order to make the car think it has skinnier tires on it when it's driving down the street. So it, it, it drives and doesn't tram when it goes down the freeway and stuff like that. It's just a, it's, there's a lot of small changes that need to be made in order to get that to happen. So with that said, I'm a break here. Um, 
So what we've done here, and, and there, here's the car now, kind of you can see it uh, with the wheels off of it. I'll walk over towards that. The, the, the goal being, and kind of interesting, that a lot of cars that you see nowadays, for instance, the C8 Corvette, when you, when you purchase that car, which is, a, I think, a leading edge car, uh, they'll give you a different track alignment when you take the car to the track. Well, this is something else that, that, that Peter, the owner, asked me, if, is there a way we can compromise in any way without compromising you know, what the car does? Well, we work very, very hard to try and make a car so we can have a somewhat aggressive street alignment that still drives well, but you can drive it to the racetrack and not burn your tires up, which is a real common problem with all those people that might be watching this that take their car to the track and realize that uh, you, know, you, you have one alignment so the, cars, the tires don't wear out in the street, but once you go to the racetrack, you, you burn up the tires. And so we've, we've made some compromises and found in using professional drivers in the car where we can literally go with the tires that we have and run them up at the track for the day and drive home and you don't completely destroy the tires when you do that. So we do have a more aggressive if you wanted to set a lap record, but we found the car to be very, very competitive. Okay, okay so back here we have an, an Inconel heat shield, which is very, very efficient and it doesn't take up a lot of room. So this keeps the heat down so we're not gonna burn up the, uh, the outside shield, the bumper hoods regularly on here. So that, that's an aerospace type of a thing that you won't see on the average car. Then as you kind of fall underneath here, you'll see some of the suspension pieces not fully all installed right now. This is the A-arm that I was talking about that's now multi-piece, and so we're able to have several different adjustments rather than just when the factory is in one piece with the other attachments here. You see underneath the engine how everything is detailed back to our transmission, which has got all custom gears in it, uh, and a special limited slip that helps in the handling because we have that, that also set up uh, to work with the, um, uh, the suspension settings on the car. You can keep walking forward underneath here and you'll see the car's been completely disassembled. Everything's been reassembled and it, we, we look at every single aspect of the car. If there's any damage, it's not repaired. It's actually drilled out at the spot welds and completely replaced exactly how the factory would do it. So you have essentially a brand new chassis. Over here, you can see the uprights I was showing earlier. This shows you some of the geometry in here. This is a special one piece um, tie rod that we use with bump steer adjustment in it. And um, the, we've gone to different types of bearings. You can see here on the also too, this is some of the extension where we've taken the actual suspension and moved it further outboard. And this is part of with the scrub and part of helping the track on the car. So lots of little details, um, but all of them for purpose. Nothing was done for aesthetics uh, as far as the suspension goes, the outside of the car. I, I think I'd say it's aesthetically pleasing, but uh, it was, we had to make the large fenders in order to get the, the wheels and the type size tires I'm trying to get underneath the car in order to maximize the grip. Great. One, one of the things I don't want to pass over while talking about these cars and what we've done to the cars is the fact that the reason we do it is so we can adjust and tune a car to the liking of the the person who's gonna own the car. So while we do test a lot with professional drivers to find ultimate limits, the very important part is, is, is getting a car that's easy to drive, which this car has proven to be, a very, very easy car to drive, which is gonna give them more confidence ultimately, which makes them a better driver. So we've found that people who are not as experienced get in this car and are actually much faster than they are in many of their other cars. That's one of the key things behind this and one of the things when I'm explaining what grip is, is at the end of the day, you take a look at the stopwatch and you go, wow, how did I go that much faster? Most of it was due to the confidence in the car and that's something we're most proud of. And we are still actually under construction um, due to the uh, coronavirus outbreak. We have had to stop some of the uh, construction that you see back here. We have uh, three paint booths that will be going back in here. So one is or or um, partially built back here, but we have two more coming in here which are gonna act as a prep room for all of our uh, finishing and our carbon fiber production. And then over here we have uh, three bays that uh, we use to build all the cars. This is sort of the uh, sub-assembly area right here where all of the suspension and sub-assemblies are built. 
We've also used this kind of to lay out some of the parts that are going to be assembled on the car. As, as you can see here, the bumpers and some of the carbon fiber components that we build in house. And over here, this is our uh, latest build right now that is a few weeks away from being complete. We just installed the engine. Uh, this is uh, very similar to the Mexico blue paint, but it's actually a custom paint mixture that we developed. And as you can see, you, uh, the suspension and all the other components, most of the body components are built. We just have to uh, physically install them. And this right here is um, a partial assembly of our new LED taillights. Uh, as you can see here, all of these parts are 3D printed. And this is the silver part here is the uh, aluminum parts, which houses the LED light beam that goes across. And then back over here, we have the Winchester build. This build is actually complete, and it was here for some software updates. But uh, we took some of the components out because we want to be able to show our, cli our clients, you know, what the build process is like. So this is obviously earlier on in the build, and this would be something where it would be mid-build, where you can see the exposed um, exhaust behind the rear bumper, and you can see the uh, wheel liner here, the carbon fiber Kevlar wheel liners that are in here, which a lot of people don't get to see when, once the wheels are on. I think the most R&D has been really the suspension and chassis, yeah. but uh, the biggest, most difficult part for us to make were actually the lights, the headlights and the taillights. Because we're making these on a very low production scale, and they're not, we're not making thousands of them, we are not producing you know, um, hard tooling for them. So they're actually individually made um, by CNC. So it's literally a piece, a one-off piece every single time that we make. So they're very challenging. And then <clears throat> over here, as a lot of you guys have seen, this is the Greenwich built. Uh, the car is green with uh, terracotta style interior. It's actually the same uh, leather interior that is on the Porsche Carrera GT. And it's a little bit further along. You have the Cerakoted exhaust tips and um, it's you can see the, uh, the engine's fully built over here with the uh, rear suspension control and the interior's all done. I'll open the interior for you so you guys can see some of the detail that goes into the interior. This car will do just under <clears throat> a little over 180 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. So we've actually taken the car to Laguna Seca last March, and we were able to do a one minute 33 lap time, which is considerable, um, especially for a car that was originally built in 1995. Um, that's on par with um, you know, modern Porsche 911s like the GT3 RS. Um, it's faster than a 458 or a Nissan Nismo GTR. So it's, it was quite a remarkable uh, lap time to show <clears throat> this isn't just about looks, it's really for performance. And the track time really just proves all that. Yeah, so before I let you guys go, I want to share my, uh, some of my personal collection cars. This is a uh, BMW E30 M3 that I had fully restored a few years back and uh, it really speaks to my original passion for cars was started on a BMW <clears throat> and uh, color and paint the paint and the interior is all uh, original uh, I have done some upgrades like improved the brake system and the wheels and fully reupholstered the interior and over here uh, to my right is the GT2 RS. Um, 
I'm obviously a big Porsche fan and um, really uh, purchased this car because I want to make sure that um, we're always keeping a very high-end benchmark for what modern cars are supposed to drive like today. And uh, this gives me an idea of what our customers are expecting when they drive our cars because a lot of our clients own cars like the GT2 RS. So um, it's a good benchmark car for us to be able to understand um, where we need to be in terms of comfort and performance. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you guys in the future at our private tours or um, at the Peterson Museum. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click subscribe, comment, and like for more videos like this one.